Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. Ryan Riggs, Justin Bryan on hand for you for the final time in 2020. We're just recording this a couple of days out before Christmas as I welcome JB into the show. Hello. G'day Ronnie, how are you? It's uh, been a big few days for you and I. We've been uh, making the most of the off season as they say. Mm. Big day today on the day of recording, the biggest day of the uh, basketball calendar. <laughs> oh, the yes. opening night of uh, <laughs> the NBA season, almost halfway through the Lakers Clippers matchup at the moment. But no, a busy time of year for everyone, a festive time of year and uh, Good to be on camera for one final time. It's been a while, but uh, we've eventually had enough build up and we've got enough to talk about bringing the show, so it should be good. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to our end of year show, which starts right now. And let's get the ball rolling with a statement from Hobart Chargers President Brett McKay, who unfortunately, due to work commitments, he couldn't uh, get, a, get some time to spend with us to, in front of camera to talk, but he has sent a statement. I'll read that out and we'll pop the statement up on the screen. And basically, in, in a nutshell, I might just paraphrase here a little bit saying that yes he's spoken with us here at Chargers TV JB and he wants to wish everyone first off a Merry Christmas and a safe and happy new year well and of course we'll, we'll do that at the end of the show on the Chargers forefront uh, they are in negotiation we're basically saying you can say that we are in negotiations with some very exciting imports Sounds very exciting indeed, Ron. Australian and local players for both uh, women's and men's programs that and that there is opposing, I'm reading Brett's writing here, that is opposing of some players' announcements before the end of the year. So maybe, JB, we might have an announcement off the back end of Christmas going into the new year potentially, and that's the statement there from, from Brett. Yes, well, that sounds very exciting. Mm. Obviously, with everything going on in the world, it's going to be a very local, central league next year and that's for all leagues pretty much across the world you'll mm. find that you know the Australian leagues you know particularly the NBL one they'll be all Australian based you'll probably find over in New Zealand their league will be very much uh, New Zealand based and of course all the European mm. leagues uh, as one as well so very exciting and a lot of young talent floating around Ronnie as we know the WNBL has just finished their own Shana Thompson having played for the yes. uh, Townsville mm. Fire up there she has uh, come back albeit unsuccessful in a grand final campaign but she'll come back with a lot of experience and hopefully a few connections as well to help bolster our women's team there and our men's team of course the nbl not far from around the corner other big news around that obviously floating around the state but hopefully that's going to draw some traction and some uh, more attention to the charges and get some uh, bigger and better bodies uh, floating in around with our obviously our young talent uh, for 2021. Absolutely, JB. And of course, with players and, and coaching announcements pending, I mean, the coaching announcements is, is probably the worst kept secret. Death, going uh, death <laughs> taxes kind of operation, right? <laughs> going around town. But also, too, we're hoping to announce where we're going to be playing next year as well to JB with, with a venue. That is still in negotiations at the moment. Yeah, still in negotiations. I know that we're reasonably far through with those negotiations. Mm. It's not um, dead in the water so to speak. I mean, for Ronnie and I, we've pretty much covered basketball all year at most venues across the state, so I, I think we'd be pretty easy operators on that, Ronnie, but we want to try and get a maximum crowd, a maximum value for dollar, dollar a great value experience for the fan on the, who is at the game, and also a value for money experience for those that will be putting up with us uh, on the commentary next year. So, you know, there's a lot of factors to weigh mm. up there as well, but no, good to see we're in negotiations there, and, you know, the big pieces of the puzzle um, being fixed into place sooner rather than later. And of course, the schedule, JB, there's been a lot of talk about when the, the season could potentially start. Uh, questions were raised at the um, at the AGM for the Hobart Chargers only a few weeks ago, and the, the uh, feedback that was given to the members by the board was basically some surveys have come out to clubs to, to fill in and send back to the league, and and we um, uh, I was listening to Larry Kilsman on um, SEN Radio in Melbourne there, saying that the potential Potential NBL season, you know, starting on January 10, will go through to about June. So we're now kind of speculating now. We haven't contacted NBL 1 HQ as yet, but we endeavoured to do so over the off-season, JB, is when will we get a season start? I'm speculating around May, June at this stage. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Mm. Of course, it's going to be on the back of the NBL um, season. I think a big thing to factor in too, Ronnie, is not only how the NBL 1 season is going to go, but if the NBL want to get back into that, you know, November to December start like they normally would. Well, how cramped is the schedule going to be? Are mm. we talking about you know going away um, and doing you know rather than uh, back to back road trips, back to back to back road trips? Are we talking about not having a buy? Uh, is it just going to be get your 18, 20 games in as quick as possible? Are we talking about teams? 
potentially coming to Tasmania. Um, you know, two teams coming to Tasmania, so they're playing right up mm. around the coast. So there's basketball Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So uh, mainly a logistical point of view as far as travel and a logistical point of view as far as, you know, the NBL because they're obviously going to want to get into routine and ultimately their decision is going to, you know, make our decision a lot easier. So it'll be very interesting. It'll be a compact schedule, no doubt. Mm. Uh, but as we mentioned, it's got to be, you know, the timing right. And I would like to think if they can keep the NBL 1 as normal as possible through that, you know, winter early, you know, that late winter, very early spring period, um, then I think things will be fine. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out, though. And the other factor is, of course, the global pandemic, COVID-19, that could still come into play, as, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks in the news. Anything could happen at any given time at this point in time. Absolutely, and it doesn't take anything for um, our state to go, no, we're closing the borders, you can't go in and mm. out. Nothing for Victoria to do the same thing. And I mean, while we look at it, um, Victoria, Tasmania, as far as a league bubble sort of thing for the South, you've also got to look at the fact that you now have Adelaide, Brisbane, and potentially Perth joining in in their separate yeah. NBL One mm. ventures as well, so mm. there's a lot to take into account. And I mean, that's the big. That's probably even that's even bigger than as far as working out the fixture and then working out the um, NBL where we fit in the NBL as well. Is just how are we going to work uh, in the uh, event that a border closes down or that we have to stop play or that we can't have gatherings and stuff like that. So. Yeah, a lot to take into account. Very touch and go, but um, the right people are in charge, Ronnie, so I'm sure they'll um, they'll work it out. Uh, absolutely. All right, we're going to throw to a break, and what, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to uh, show you a favourite moment back in 2018, Jobo. We'll do a bit of a throwback here, and then when we come back from break, we've got some news on Rex the Rhino, so we'll see you shortly. Welcome back. All right, let's get on to another topic of conversation that, that has been happening very quietly, JB, I must say. It's but, probably, but it's probably been the, one of our most well-known, mm. biggest hidden off-season secrets <laughs> in recent club history. Absolutely. So Rex Dorino, our wonderful mascot here at the Hobart Chargers, has decided he, he, he wants to drop a bit of weight. He wants to kind of get buffed and, and bulked and, and ready to go for season 2021 in NBL 1 to be one of the... the the premier mascots of the NBL One. Not one of, one, the, the premier The mascot. premier, thank you very much. The premier mascot of the NBL One competition. So we've decided to um, take Rex on a, a bit of an adventure, JB, and let's roll the footage. And I believe, first up, we sent him to a clinic which was run by the Glenorchy Revelers Club. And great. And my thanks to Kate Clark as well too for allowing Rex coming in. So you can see Rex there, JB. Yes, what? President uh, Brett McKay with him as well. Just Absolutely. Got, guiding him on the way. Uh, Rex a very big human, at almost seven foot and about <laughs> 500,000 kilos. And yes. as you can see, he started getting the ball handling skills in a little bit there, Ronnie. And yep. then... Uh, Needed to work on that shooting form. It's, <laughs> Rex is a very interesting shooter. He's a left-handed shooter. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he manages to get that done very nicely. So slowly developing his game, but obviously that's got its limits. So off to all aerobics he went. Yes, and he joined our, our Chargers squad in for a, a fitness session here with Michelle Chopping. Yes, needed to get that game fitness up, as you can see there, on the battle rope. And uh, not a good look for Rex in the grey, by the no. way. Hoping, <laughs> hoping to improve that. A muffin top from Muffin Break has not even been that big in history, but... As you can see, uh, Guy had seen enough there, so he was straight onto the contract and Big Rex officially signed up. As you can see, you can't even grab the pen at the moment. You wait <laughs> to the end of the season. He's keen. He's ready to go. There they are, the fellas. And uh, it was straight into the... Uh Weight resistance training, Ronnie. It was straight into a, a, a circuit class, JB, as you can see here with the footage. He's just powering away on, on that ski rig there. Yes, uh, really thrusting through the next Winter Olympics, uh, he wishes, and then we yes. uh, finish off with a bit of a curl set there. So, now it's good to see Rex in and out, and I am waiting to see, everyone talks about the summer bod and the beach bod, I'm waiting for the great Rex the Rhino himself to uh, rock up with his own beach bod and just see how the great man looks heading into season 2021. He's on the right path with the crew at all aerobics. Oh, abs absolutely, and again, thanks to, to Guy Franklin and Terry Moore uh, for helping us out there with Rex as well too. Absolutely fantastic to see. We can't wait 
to see these results as well too, JB. They're working hard with me. I believe he might be there today. Yes, well, we do believe he is there. He's not here in studio. Uh, no. He told us he was going to the gym, but uh, Christmas shopping has been very busy, and Rex, yes. is a, Rex is a popular man, so who knows there. But uh, I'm going to imagine that his uh, shorts are going to be similar to the old Jared the Subway guy, Ronnie, where he can <laughs> stand in one leg by the time we get back to it. So, no, Rex working hard. Everyone at the club has been working hard in the off-season, Ronnie, and mm. really uh, finished their final session, I believe, about five, six weeks ago now. Yes. Uh, everyone in tremendous condition in the off-season. Uh, hopefully they can maintain that over the Christmas break and the club really looking good on the court as far as local talent for 2021. Oh, that sure is, JB, and we're really looking forward uh, to both teams getting back on court. I believe January is the go as far as when that is um, happening, and we'll be there with our cameras as well too to capture those first moments of them getting back on court finally, JB, because they haven't really been on court as as charges. Yes, they've been on court with their individual clubs for State League and SBL action, which, of course, we cover here on an independent channel. But, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing them on court and getting ready for the season ahead. Yes, no, it should be good. Hopefully a few players, a few uh, niggling injuries, they can get those healed up as well. Hearing a few different local names who are really keen to try and push their case um, for the squad and for selection uh, in 2021. So uh, it's good to see that the motivation has really come through in what has been the most extended off-season in the history of the sport here in Tasmania, mm. uh, to really push through, really develop their game, uh, really develop themselves physically, mentally, everything that encompasses the game. Um, and, yeah, really looking forward to seeing what they can bring to the floor in 2021. And just quickly, Rex has sent, has sent a, a nice little graphic through to wish everyone uh, a Merry Christmas and a safe and happy New Year. We'll just throw it up on the screen now. Yes, the uh, great man there, very happy um, um, and joyful, very merry. Rex is uh, going to have to be very careful with the uh, Christmas diet, I think, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> yes. Better not get caught up with uh, old JV over Christmas because otherwise Rex's uh, routine will be out the window. But no, he's going to continue on, keep pushing. And uh, yeah, good to see Rex in the festive, uh, festive spirit, Ronnie. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on Rex's progress and you can keep up to date with, with that and all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers through their social media. You can give them a like on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Instagram and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well too. So don't forget to keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers. JB, 2020 has been one of the most odd, weirdest years I've ever ever been through good way currently. To put it. Um, good way to put it. Is there anything you can can take away from from 2020 any basketball moment. I mean, we, we might mean we can talk about uh, a little bit about state league or or um, SBL where our, oh. where our, you know our Chargers players have been actively involved. Yeah, there's been a lot of state league action. I'm um, sorry, a lot of SBL action that mm. was really exciting to see. The women's comp, um, as far as the top three teams, was one of the tightest in history. Hobart uh, Phoenix having had nearly. Not won a game for six weeks. Won the uh, two finals they had to to win to uh, win the premiership. Uh, Glenorchy going pretty much um, top of the pops all year, beating Hobart in their final. Uh, seeing the likes of Jack Stanwix, uh, mm. the likes of a Liam Smith, the likes of an Elijah Paulson, those young guys that are really pushing through. Geordie Hargrave really take their game to the next level again through all the help of the. All aerobics yep. fitness, seeing some of our veterans uh, still floating around the league. Uh, same with our women's team. Um, probably the, per the highlight, I think, for the year for anyone who's a Hobart basketball fan, Ronnie, would be seeing Shana Thompson off to the yes, WNBL. Yes, absolutely. Averaging nearly 38 a game over her 10 games here in SBL. Um, and again, played in the grand final side in her first year. So that's a big tick in the box there. Personal highlight for me was rocking in just as the ball was about to go up for uh, both <laughs> state league grand finals. Couldn't time that uh, any better. But no, a lot of uh, basketball action, a lot going on. Um, and yeah, it, honestly, for everything it could have been, as far as how low we thought uh, uh, the year would be with action, uh, a tremendous high um, in general, Ronnie. So no, I thought it was a pretty good year and I think it showed the mental toughness and the perseverance of uh, our young ballers mm. here in Tasmania and certainly across Australia to, you know, in one of the toughest times ever in history as far as, uh, well, general life is concerned. I mean, modern life certainly um, able to persevere and keep going and doing their thing. So, you know, that was also a highlight. It was good. My highlight, just quickly, the the guys from Embryo One HQ uh, covering our, our, our SBL. Um, we've just putting some posts on their page. Yes, we did get a, we did get a lot of coverage uh, there. That that coverage to me was was a great highlight, and also to bringing in. Um, Michelle Chopping as well too, and the work she's done with all our players, we could easily see that um, transition from 
the, the gym work to then on court in the SBL action and state league action where they went, they kind of went next level with their athleticism, JB. Yeah, it created a good measurement too. Mm. I mean, they were able to test week by week, month by month, set mm. their goals as to where they were, how their progress was going, and in turn adjust their training and, and programs like that. Whereas in a normal season, you know, you're sort of training twice mm. a week with the charges, you're playing SBL, so you don't sort of get that time in the gym. But no, it was really good to see players develop and grow their game. And it was evident from the time they stepped on the floor in round one all the way back in March to only a couple of weeks ago on grand final day, um, a tremendous growth in their yes. ability on mm. and off the floor. So, no, a credit to the team at All Aerobics, credit to Guy, Terry and Michelle and everyone who's helped out there. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the players could thank them enough either. And I think it's really put the club in good stead, not only um, for 2021, but moving forward in the future, a more professional approach uh, to the way we play the game. Absolutely. And while we're, on this, while we're thanking kind of players, coaches, um, some of our, uh, our sponsors as well too, JB. Uh, we've got to thank the board and the volunteers. Um, I know the volunteers haven't been able to do much this year, but be ready for 2021. It's going to be absolutely exciting. We can't wait. And the board have been working hard behind the scenes, JB, to keep things afloat, to keep things rolling through. Um, they're still negotiating with lots of sponsors that want to come back on board next year. Um, and it's a credit to the board that they're still kicking on. And, you know, it was really Really good to see him at the AGM as well too, and they're all in good spirits as well. But we've got to thank the board as well. Absolutely, and they've been very supportive of us in our endeavour to try and get as yes. much information mm. out to you guys and girls so you know what's going on, because the last thing we want to be um, is uninformed. The last thing we want you to be is uninformed, so we try and get everything we can as it's fresh, whether it's onto our social media, whether it's here at Chargers TV. Um, so yeah, couldn't thank them enough for the support they've had, they've uh, given everyone, Ronnie. It's, it's been tr tremendous. And again, you know, in a situation where you would have thought the club would go almost into shutdown, they've mm. taken that next step of professionalism, which has been awesome to see. And again, holds the club and everyone who is a local basketballer in great stead for 2021. Absolutely. And of course, on behalf of myself and, and JB, we want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe and happy new year. Have a great time with family and friends. and uh, Stay safe, importantly. Absolutely, so. stay safe. Um, you just never know what could happen around the corner, JB. So we want to make sure, every, make sure that everyone is safe and well. Uh, we're looking forward to 2021. We're going to be, I've, we'll try to be back sometime early on in, in the new year with, with hopefully some news and some announcements. So keep an eye on our social medias uh, where the, that news will come. Um, but we are looking forward to the 2021 season. We're looking forward to getting back on commentary for, for NBL1 action as well too. Um, and... Yeah, you just can't wait, Joe. Absolutely. Get back into the thick of it. Sometimes it felt like we were twiddling our thumbs a little mm. bit. We were sort of distant with um, how much content we'd have. Okay, we've do gone and done something, but uh, it's maybe a 30-second talking point. So you can't mm. really, you know, you can put it on social media, but you can't really develop um, a program or a show out of it. But no, over the last couple of months, with everything winding down and uh, pending announcements and uh, heading into the festive season, always plenty to talk about. So again, that's got us here. And we're hoping certainly by the middle of January to be able to bring a show um, and again, just update everyone with what's going on. Hopefully a few big announcements uh, at that point as well, Ronnie. So yeah, again, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everyone, stay safe. And uh, we do look forward to uh, having the people join us in 2021. Absolutely. And on that note, we'll wrap it up there. So on behalf of Justin Bryant, I'm Ron Riggs. This has been another edition of Chargers TV, and we'll see you next year.